guys, it's Carol. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I've got a sore throat, but I'm okay. Um, Happy New Year. Seems like forever since I've made a video. How, how y'all doing? Would you have a good Christmas? Uh, I did. I had a, a real nice Christmas. I saw family a lot. And my kids and my grandkids. And ate good food. Uh, upheld two traditions that the dogs quit fighting. I tell you, I get the tripod out and they think, oh good, mama's going to be busy. We don't have to mind. We can do whatever we want. Anyway, I have two Christmas traditions that we uh, keep most years. The first one is either on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, get horribly sick. The second one is somehow make a big mess. My um, little granddaughter that's nine, or my only granddaughter, uh, they went to her other grandma's house on Christmas Eve. It's about 90 miles from here, a little bitty place. And uh, they were there and in the middle of the night, Christmas Eve, she woke up with a horrible sore throat. So they stayed to have Christmas morning and lunch, and then they came back to town to take her to an urgent care. Oh, my poor daughter-in-law. She said when they got there, there was only one urgent care open, and it was packed. They waited four hours with this horribly sick child, and a, uh, my grandson had a really bad cold, so in there with two sick kids just waiting. Anyway, they finally got her some medicine, but by the time they saw them, it was uh, 7.30 or something. Anyway, there wasn't a pharmacy open in town. <laughs> they had to wait till the next morning to get her some medicine. But anyway, she came down with this horrible case of tonsillitis, and then I got it from her, and then... Um, I don't know that I have tonsillitis. I didn't go to the doctor, but I have this horrible sore throat swollen tonsils and then her daddy got it he did go to urgent care on Sunday because it was so horribly bad and uh, the urgent care doctor told him if his tonsils got any more swollen or his neck got any more swollen to get to the hospital ER and uh, they'd have to do something about the infection but anyway so that was our one family tradition we upheld the other one was, oh, I made a mess. My daughter that lives across from me, Casey, you know, that's been in the video, uh, when she went out to her dad's and stepmom's house for Christmas, her dad reminded her that she had a turkey breast, turkey breast in his freezer. So she brought that home, and I don't remember what day, Saturday, I think it was, um, she brought it over to me and we baked it in the oven and, and made dressing and green bean casserole and anyway so I baked it in the oven took it out you know the oven's really good and hot because it had been in there several hours and then put the dressing in and put the green bean casserole next to it well after 20 minutes you're supposed to take that green bean casserole out and put the remaining uh, French fried onion rings, sprinkle them on top and put it back in there to toast a little bit. So I was doing that, took it out, got the onions on top, went to put it back in the oven, and this hand, I'm left-handed, uh, I broke in a car wreck one time, and it has never been the same. It's just not very strong. Um... Anyway, I was trying to put the green bean casserole back in the oven when this hand just gave out and I dumped half of the green bean casserole in the bottom of the hot, hot oven. <laughs> you know, there was no cleaning it up right then. <laughs> so, I haven't cleaned the oven yet. <laughs> and then I got so sick with this sore throat, I did not care if I had a clean oven or not. Uh, but I, I'm... After this video, I'm going to go clean it. I searched on Pinterest to find some made, homemade concoction to use. And I found this one that's just all stuff you'd have in your kitchen. And it says, spray it in there, wait 30 minutes, and then simply wipe it clean. I'll let you know if that works. <laughs> I hope it does, but if it does, I'll be sure to tell you. 
Um, then today, my oldest daughter and her two sons were here to have lunch and spend the afternoon. And her sons love mashed potatoes. I had a roast in the crock pot and I, and I was gonna make mashed potatoes for those boys. I usually cook a five pound bag of potatoes if it's my daughter, her two kids, me and my other daughter. That's a lot of potatoes. <laughs> But my gosh, her teenage boys, they're 18 and 19, or is 120, no, 18 and 19, they can eat their weight in mashed potatoes. But it, anyway, I didn't cook the whole five pound bag. I peeled nine potatoes and put, got them cut and put it in the pan and took it over to the sink to put it water in it. And all of a sudden, I could not hold that pan anymore with my, my left hand. It just would not support it. So my daughter took it from me and got it put on the stove. And within minutes, I had such horrible pain right here. It's a weird spot right there. Oh, my gosh. Intense pain. On a scale from 1 to 10, it was a 15. It was just horrible. It hurt so bad, I could not move my arm. And it radiated down to my elbow and was just intense pain. And um, so I told my daughter, and uh, I told her, Sh should I collapse? Then I guess I'm having a heart attack. Call 911. <laughs> um, it hurt like crazy. And um, my ex husband has had a lot of trouble with his shoulders and had rotocuff surgery and all kinds of things so they called their dad and told him how I felt and I mean I wasn't paralyzed but I simply could not move this arm a smidgen it just hurt so bad and their dad said that must be a pinched nerve so I looked that up on the internet and it sounded like a radial pinched nerve um after about two and a half, three hours, it, it stopped being so intense that I could not stand it. Uh, and now it just barely hurts. But let me tell you, that that was a horrible pain. I don't know. Mom, my other daughter said, what have you been doing that you would have sprained that muscle or something so hard? I was peeling potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I did. I think I must have pinched a nerve. Anyway, that's how my week has gone, and I'm looking forward to New Year's Day and starting a new year. I don't make resolutions because I don't keep them, and that just makes me feel feel like a loser if I can't make some resolutions and actually keep them. But I do have one goal, and that goal for 2020 is to write down my passwords somewhere so that I can remember them. I absolutely hate passwords. I, I always create one and think, oh, I'll remember that. No, I never do. And uh, so that's my goal for 2020. Just write down my passwords. If somebody breaks into my apartment and the one thing they want to take is a, my notebook where I've written down some passwords and if they can find it, It'll be okay. I can call and cancel my debit card or something. But anyway, what's your goal for 2020? Uh, I was going to tell you something about living on Social Security, but man, it just went right out of my mind. I have no idea what it was, but I'll think of it and we'll do another Social Security video. Okay, I'm going to go, guys. You have a wonderful day. Good New Year's Eve. Be safe and have a wonderful new year. Bye.